Today we're going to give our update on AMC, GameStop, and touch on a few of these other meme stocks. It's Tuesday, June 9th. There's a lot of commentary in, I guess I would call it punditry. I don't even know if that's a word, but we're going to take it about why these stocks can be under pressure or up one day or down. And typically what happens is people assign the reason to these stocks being down as FUD, what you know, whatever you want to categorize as that, naked shorts or attacks in a community or whatever it may be. But it's really simple to us, right? If you look at the price of the stock, this is AMC stock. This is the options flow for today. This is the real-time options flow analysis. And you can see that this starts at zero and goes down. That tells us that Traders came in today and either bought puts or sold calls. Those are what's called negative delta trades. Negative delta trades infers that market makers had to short stock in order to hedge themselves. So the stock opens a little bit higher and then trades straight down. And then what you see happens is we get some bullish flow comes into the market and this hero cumulative indicator, which is the options indicator, comes back to zero. The stock goes back up. And then look at this. Now the stock is trading down as the bearish flow comes back into the market. Again, you can see the bearish flow comes in here and down goes the stock. Now this is the intraday flow, right? And this is pressuring this stock. Now if people come in and start buying calls or selling puts, that will shift this indicator higher and it could shift the stock higher. The only other way this could trade higher is if suddenly a whole bunch of bullish stock volume comes in, which is certainly possible, right? It can overwhelm whatever is happening in terms of the options market and the hedging flows. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, we have a lot of open interest at 50. The biggest open interest in terms of gamma is at 55. And so, you know, this is kind of the range for the stock. And this is the range for the stock, we think, until Friday night's expiration at 611. If the stock trades over 55, but this key gamma strike, and we're going to show you this on the Equity Hub, doesn't shift higher, then we think that the stock will close back under 55 on Friday night. So that's all we got to watch is the options market, and we can figure out what's going to happen with AMC. So the other thing that we want to show now is GameStop, and then we'll switch over to the Equity Hub. So GameStop is a interesting trade today because it has earnings tomorrow. And so there's a bunch of other kind of factors here. There's that event factor coming into the stock. Now, GameStop is interesting as well because it started off down along with the options flow. You note that this number is a half to a third of what the AMC flow is. So the options flow in GameStop is not as big as AMC today. And again, it trades in a very similar fashion. Starts off weak, gets a little bit of bull action back, not a lot. And then the stock has traded lower. And with that, you know, you can correlate these peaks, right? You know, bearish flow comes in off this mark and the stock trades down a little bit. So 300 is the huge number for GameStop uh, into Friday's close. The earnings are likely to have some impact on volatility today and tomorrow, but same thing with AMC. If this gamma strike, big gamma strike at 300 shifts higher into Friday, then we give a higher chance that the stock can trade up. If the stock key gamma strike stays at 300 and the stock's at say 325 on Friday morning, then we think that the stock is gonna trade lower. It's as simple as that. So let's flip over to the Equity Hub quickly and we can talk about some of these other stocks. First, thing we want to talk about Workhorse. You know, Workhorse is an interesting one because the key gamma strike is at 15. The stock is trading a bit above that at 16. But what's interesting about Workhorse is that if you look at our five day history, this key gamma strike doesn't move up from yesterday to today. The top call open interest is at 20, so that's our major resistance point. But the fact that this number didn't move higher is not a bullish signal. That's a bearish signal, right? That means that big options trades are not filling in above. So the fact that there's huge gamma expiring on 611 and 15 is the big strike, we are bearish on workhorse due to the fact that this didn't rise higher and we think that it's going to likely close in or around 15 based on today's data. The other name that everybody's talking about and the last name that we're gonna look at today is Clovis. And you know the key gamma strike there is at 22. The, the dynamic of Clovis is that the biggest expiration is at 618. Now, Clovis doesn't have those weekly expirations. So 611 is not a tradable option expiration. So 618 is the nearest expiration and it is the largest expiration in terms of gamma. 68% of that total options gamma, that's 68% of the hedging flow is tied, 618 expiration. So we see 10 as the low which is quite a bit above where the stock is trading at the moment. And then 22 is this major resistance level. This is a major resistance level because it is the largest center of call gamma in Clovis. So what does that mean? That means that 
we have this resistance point wherein if the Clovis stock stops going higher and or calls aren't added at strikes above 22, that the hedging flow, market makers can start to sell off long stock hedges. They can sell their flow and that is going to pull back the stock under this 22 strike. So these are just, this 22 strike is literally just called decay, but it doesn't expire. The bulk of it doesn't expire until 618. So that is the flow dynamic in Clovis. You can assign whatever else you want to it, but you know the fact of the matter is there is very large call volume. Yesterday it was 1.1 million contracts. That's very, very large. And these hedging flows are persistent all day long, day in, day out, right? You might get a spurt of buying off of a, a Reddit post, some algos reading Wall Street bets, or a news article drops, or Kramer says Clovis, or Elon Musk says Moon Clovis, right? And that can override the hedging flow temporarily. But the hedging flow is always going to come back. It's always going to be there day in and day out as long as you have this much outstanding call open interest, 547,000 contracts. And again, big put open interest as well. So this hedging flow is persistent, man, right? It could get overridden in the short term, but it's going to be constantly there. So that's our update for today. If you have any questions, hit us up on Twitter, at SpotGamma. Leave comments in below the video. We'll get back to those. Or you can send a note to info at spotgamma.com. Thanks.